What is up guys and welcome back to GameBird Weekly. We've got an exciting show for you guys today. Welcome back to one of the best video get actually the best video game podcast in America. That's what they're saying. That's what the rumors are saying. Um, that's what I've heard. You heard that, yeah? Yeah, I've uh, I've been hanging out at the old rumor mill and uh, I've definitely have heard that. So yeah. Right, right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Anyways, we've got a great show for you guys today. I'm joined by my co-host, Colin from Any Games Necessary. Colin, what's up? Not much, man. Just uh, got back from the rumor mill, so, you know, ready to talk some games. Hear anything interesting lately? Uh, Just that uh, this is the greatest uh, video game podcast ever made. So You heard heard it here, folks. It's got to be true. Um, Yeah, we've got some exciting topics today. We had a Nintendo Partner Showcase this week. So for all my Nintendo fans who tune in for Nintendo content, we've got our um, reaction slash review of that showcase. We also will be discussing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Reviews are out. The game's doing killer. Spoiler alert. We'll dive deeper into that. Um, we also have a reveal of Shadow of the Erd Tree, the first and maybe only DLC coming to Elden Ring. We don't know yet. Um, spoiler, it looks fantastic. We'll talk more about that. But first, I want to say, Colin, you've got a you've got a new video out. Yeah, yeah, I have a new video out. It's um, the top five games coming March 2024. Um, if you are interested in knowing what good games to play next month, please uh, go over to my channel, watch it, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, guys, I will have uh, Colin's channel linked in the description box below. So please go check him out, throw him a sub, throw him a like, check out his new video. It's awesome. So, no, more spoilers. There's a lot of good stuff coming out uh, for March. So uh, some exciting yeah. stuff that you got to cover. I as well dropped a new video this morning. It's talking about Switch 2 and why I think that Switch 2 could possibly be the best launch year for a Nintendo console. Maybe not necessarily in the sales department, but more on the software side as timing cycles um, with development in certain companies kind of line up really nice uh, to time some really cool big releases. So definitely check that out. I'll have that video linked in this description box below. Um, With that being said, or actually, no, I wanna, uh, real quick before we dive into the first topic, um, I want to say what a year it has been. We're barely, you know, into our second month. And I mean, just this week alone, Partner Showcase, uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree, Final Fantasy VII Re- uh, Rebirth. Uh, we also had that interesting little Microsoft announcement where they talked about some of their big exclusives landing on, uh, you know, other consoles. It's been crazy. It felt like last year there's no way you could top it. And I feel like we're we're already, you know, close to being there two months in. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy. It, it's a definitely a feast for fans of uh, RPG games. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And Se- Sega's crushing this year. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you live in Japan, you can play Mother 3 right now, too. So that is true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, technically, I, I guess you could you could do a Japanese account because it is, uh, you know, there's no region locking. But if you don't read kanji, um, you know, you're kind of just playing a guessing game if you want to experience that. Yeah, super fun. <laughs> Give Absol- us a translation, Nintendo, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. But yeah, I mean, with that being said, let's dive head on into our first topic for the day the day and that is the nintendo partner showcase that landed um we got quite a few announcements now uh for you guys who you know might not know partner showcases generally they're not these big events that are filled with like um huge juggernaut announcements mind blowers with epic closers so with that being said 
Um, let's just get out initial thoughts real quick, and then I could have you list out all the things that were were announced for it. On my end, initial thoughts, I feel like this was pretty damn good for for a partner showcase. Um, when it w- on that first day when it came out, I was kind of landing on a C C plus, but mm-hmm. the more I've thought about it. And some of the stuff that we get got some of the shadow drops and some of the things that we know are coming. I actually am raising that to a B minus and I'm grading this on a partner showcase scale. Um, I'm not grading this against a general direct, but what about you Colin? initial thoughts? Uh, wh- how did you feel? Yeah. I think if you're comparing it to like its predecessors and like, you know, the something of this scale, like we did with this state of play um, a couple weeks mm. ago, I I am inclined to give this one a B minus as well. Mm. Um, I think I think there was a lot here, and I think there's like a little bit of something for a lot of people. I mean, there's no killer app listed, right. but hey, you know, like we weren't expect we went in with a low bar, and I feel like they exceeded that low bar. So, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, C- uh, couldn't agree more. And just the fact of knowing that you know, a switch successor is, you know, looming just barely in the distance. We know an announcement's coming sooner than later. Um, So, you know, expectations already weren't that high. I think they exceeded my expectations for what I thought we'd get for a partner showcase, especially on the number of, of, of titles. Colin, do you want to go through that list of, of everything that was announced for us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first announced was Grounded. That's coming mm. April 16, 2024. Um, then Ender Magnolia. That's coming sometime in 2024. Mm. A Ranger uh, role, uh, role puzzling adventure is TBD. A Unicorn Overlord demo available today. Game is releasing March 4th, 2024. Monster Hunter Stories release date TBD. Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed. Uh, it, it's announced as release 2024. I'll, we'll talk about the Sure. Expected date later. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance, which is a DLC for Shin Megami Tensei Five, and I, I wasn't I, quite sure if that was a. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection releasing March Fourteenth, Twenty Twenty Four. South Park Snow Day TBD. Sword Art Online Fractured Daydreams TBD. Gundam Breaker Four TBD. Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble June Twenty Fifth, Twenty Twenty Four. World of Goo 2, May 23rd, 2024. Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time, October 10th, 2024. Another's Crab Treasure, Another Crab's Treasure, April 25th, 2024. Penny's Big Breakaway, available today. Week of Game Multiplayer DLC, available today. Pepper Grinder Demo, available today. TBD on that one. Pocket Card Junkie, right on uh tbd sn- demo available today oh demo and game available today uh snufkin melody of moon moon moomin valley march 7th 2024 mm-hmm. then they did a montage reel of tales of kenzara which is coming out in april demon slayer commits in oyaiba sweep the board april 26th uh kingdom come deliverance March 15th Contra Operations Galuga March 12th Pentiment February 22nd and then uh, some games coming to NSO online as of the day of the announcement. Uh, Battletoads, Battle Maniacs, RC Pro AM, Rattlesnake and Roll, Killer Instinct, Blast Corps, and then the final announcement, Endless Oceans, Luminous, coming May 2nd. Um, I just want to highlight here that they said this is all stuff from the first half of the year. They delivered on that, and most of these games are releasing in the first half. Yep, and that's pretty cool to get yeah. that amount of games and yeah, and it yeah. was a lot with a number of demos, uh, uh, a number of shadow drops, um, some no- <laughs> some notable ones. Uh, I mean, actually, uh, let's see how how do we want to do this? I guess let's uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that we're excited about first. I guess. Um, okay, I'll tell you right yeah. now. Uh, uh, I'll start with an easy one. This is a very niche game, but one that I'm genuinely excited for. It was a huge surprise. Um, A new Endless Ocean for Switch. Um, Colin, you remember this. Colin and I have known each other since high school. I was a huge Endless Ocean 
fan. I when I when I was going to college, my initial study was marine biology. So I was obsessed and a very relaxing game. The first one, there's no there's no enemies, there's no dangers of death or anything like that. They changed that in the second one. But this one, it looks really cool. It looks like another relaxing, enjoyable underwater adventure. This time with up to 29 friends you could play with. Uh, which is pretty cool. I understand that this is not a title that's for everyone. And a lot of people will look at this and be like, that's stupid, that's lame, boring. But for me, this was a pretty cool surprise and one that I probably will end up picking up for the Switch. Um, what about you? What was, uh, we'll just go well, back and forth. We'll and talk, talk about, about Endless stuff. Ocean too. Sure. Uh, I, I remember you playing this one and being like, what the hell is he playing? Why is he playing this? <laughs> and then I eventually, I was just like, oh, that's really cool. Just sitting there watching you. I'm like, wow, um, yeah. this actually looks cool. I'm a, not not really my thing, but like, sure. it was actually fun to watch you. Um, yeah, that's super cool. Um, I will, I will go on the record and say I do not have 29 friends, um, <laughs> let alone 29 friends that want to play Endless Ocean Luminous. So, you know, <laughs> that, good luck. That on is finding, a fair point. Good luck on finding 29 friends to play with. But uh, yeah. Um, so a game that I want to talk about, um, I think I think one that really surprised mm. me and uh, probably surprised you too. Uh, it's one that both of us really enjoyed back on the Wii. Um, I'm stoked that it's getting a rebrush. Um, is Disney's Epic Mickey? Um, so absolutely, this was yeah. a really cool surprise. Did not see this one coming. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a really cool game. I think it's very inspired by Mario Sunshine. Um, I think it does some of the stuff that Mario Sunshine does better. Um, you know, because they had more tech at the time mm -hmm. when they released this. I got very far on this one in the on the Wii. I'm looking forward to playing this one without motion controls. Um, yeah, there's something weird in the trailer, and like it's weird because the game is just is just uh, has just been announced that it's coming in 2024. But I don't know if you noticed at the beginning of the trailer, there was literally a um, there was a uh, like a calendar thing. And it said March twenty fifth on it. Weird. And I'm like, I'm like, is yeah. that is it coming March twenty fifth or was that in the original game that it was? Like, yeah, I'll have to look more into this. But like yeah. the March twenty fifth thing is really weird to me because there's just like, it's one of those like pull calendars where you pull the days right. off. Yeah, and it said March twenty fifth on it in Yen Sid's laboratory or whatever. Um, I think that's what it's called, Yen Sid. The guy who right. mixes the potions and Mickey steals his hat and the Fantasia. Um, but yeah. yeah, this game's cool. Oswald is a super cool character that is introduced in the game. Um, yeah, love this. Uh, Colin, have you seen any of the screenshots, uh, the screen captures of this game that have been some of the gaming sites have put out? No. no. Um, I didn't realize it when I watched the trailer, um, mm -hmm. but... One one gaming site put out like it was maybe like six screenshots of the game, and I gotta tell you, the game looks phenomenal. There is a massive visual upgrade. This is a full on remake. It's not just an upresed remaster of the game. It looks really really good. I I was really surprised when I saw the screenshots. Um, nice. So that's yeah, super exciting. Yeah, shout out to the devs at THQ Nordic. Not shout. -out out to the uh the owners over at thq nordic and embracer um but naughty yeah. naughty <laughs> yeah but glad uh glad that this game is seeing the light of day so right yeah. right for sure yeah. um another one that was here one that we actually saw before but one that i'm really excited about and it was really cool to find out that it's actually a nintendo switch exclusive and that's world of goo 2 that was the first indie game that I ever got into on the Wii. Um, so I'm really excited for this. This is definitely a day one purchase for me. Uh, World of Goo is just a blast if you guys like puzzle games with really good music and kind of a weird, dark, cryptic story kind of setting up the world. It's awesome. World of Goo 2 is 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 definitely on my, on my list of things to be excited about. Yeah, that game looks incredible. Um... World of Goo was the first indie game to break my computer because I was one of those <laughs> jerks that pirated it back in the day because I was poor. Um, I'm definitely Karma. Going to, 
yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to pay full price for this one when it comes out in May. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> looking forward to giving that one a try. But yeah, it, it definitely bricks my computer back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, next game for All you. Right. Next standout for you. Okay, Um. so another one that I wanted to talk about that got shadow dropped that I can't wait to give a try. Um. I definitely need to. It, Penny's Big Breakaway. Mm. Um, this is from the Sonic team that made my favorite 2D Sonic and Sonic Mania. Um, this game has tons of color. It looks really fun. Um, I hear it's a blast from, you know, like the initial impressions that I've heard from. Um, it looks really cool. It it looks like it checks all the boxes that like a like a fun 3D style. 3D, 2D platformer, you know, like right. A to B platformer, but like 3D in style. Um, yes, looks great. The yo-yo is a cool idea. Yeah. Yes, um, this this was a huge standout for me. Uh, I love 3D platformers. It's one of my favorite genres. They're just so much fun. This looks right up my alley. It, it reminds me of the games that I grew up with loving. You know, your Mario 64s and your Banjos and, and all those uh, great classic games. Um, it's unfortunate there's so many big, great things to play right now. Mm -hmm. If, you know, maybe maybe I will get a chance to break away from those to play this one. But, oh. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, this one's on my list. It's on my radar. I definitely want to play it. It looks really fun. I haven't seen any reviews for it yet. I don't know if you've seen any impressions for this one yet, but it looks wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, what's the next game for you? Let's see. Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, really cool announcement. Um, this is a game that's already been released. It was one. It's one of the... Xbox games that is coming to Switch, and that's Pentiment. Pentiment, uh, when that yeah. game first got announced, immediately caught my eye. Definitely a Cameron game, type of game that I'd like to play, um, and the type of game that I'd prefer to play on a hybrid console. It's the kind of game that I might want to play in bed or on the couch or on the go. So I'm definitely going to be picking up this one and checking this one out. It's totally up my alley, and I'm really thrilled Definitely thought that this was probably going to be one of those games. We didn't get Hi-Fi Rush. I thought Hi-Fi and Pentiment were going to be the two for sure. Um, but we did get Pentiment. So, didn't Hi-Fi Rush, didn't Hi Rush get announced like after? Not for, not for Switch. Oh, for it got Switch. for okay. PlayStation. But uh, uh, there, okay. it, there is a report going around right now where they're saying that Hi-Fi Rush is going to be available at launch for the next Switch console or nice. the next Nintendo console. So, yeah, um, very interesting choice by Nintendo here to include that in the montage reel and show off Grounded at the beginning. <laughs> I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah, Pentiment looks I – mean, they're both Obsidian games. I think Pentiment is just a better game all around, you know, from – I've played a little bit of Grounded. I've played a little bit of Pentiment. Pentiment looks better. It plays better. Um, Grounded on Switch looks rough. It yeah. looks rough. Uh, it looks like a PS2, PS3 game. It's it's not pretty. I don't know why they I don't know why they didn't yeah. put that in the montage reel and put Pentiment front and center. I um, I agree with you. Not to cut yeah. you off, Colin. I I completely agree with you. I and I also think that Pentiment probably serves the switch base a little bit better than grounded i don't know if that was a nintendo call or a microsoft call i'm not yeah. sure obviously grounded is a game as a service so it's probably one that microsoft wants to push harder than pentiment pentiment was probably a lot cheaper to make um and less work to maintain but i don't know that is weird pentiment what it presents way better than grounded yeah absolutely and a high yes. and a much higher reviewed game I might add. Yeah. Yeah. Much higher. All right. So I'll go over my next game. Um, so Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. Um, this looks fantastic. I love Monkey Ball. I like I did not like the newest one that was like a remake of the Wii one. Right. Um, but 
this one looks a lot of fun. I love that they're adding a battle royale mode to it. I think mm -hmm. that is possibly like one of the best games that they could like Nintendo gives us battle royale games we didn't even know we wanted that right. are much better than like the battle royale games that all the other big companies are chasing. Right. Like, yeah. What an awesome idea. 18 people on the course trying to race. Um, I couldn't really tell from the trailer, but I, I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure if you can obstruct other people or if you're like ghosts on the thing. I hope there's an option for both because I think both could be really fun and competitive play. Totally. Um, uh, I love the idea of smacking you off of the course um, when we're playing, but I also like like the idea of racing a ghost of you, similar to like Mario Maker when right. you're racing two player. Um, yeah, looks awesome. The mini games in it look really cool. I hope it's got a really cool single player uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I can't wait to. I I think you know this might be one that um, my girlfriend's son might be able to you know, play around with. And I, I can't wait to right. get to try with him because this is a cool game. I love monkey ball. So De yeah, yeah, definitely. If, if, if you grew up playing monkey ball, it's hard not to be excited for a new entry. They're just so much fun. They're chaotic. They're, they're frustrating in all of the positive ways. It's the frustration that always ends with laughter, you know, yeah. uh, where yeah. you're so close to getting through a course. And then that one corner you beef, um, so very excited for Monkey Ball. I'm excited that it's a new entry and not another remaster of, of a previous game. For um, sure. Another game that I thought looked really cool. This one's an indie. Uh, there's a demo available now for it. Pepper Grinder. I had Pepper never heard Grinder. of this before, before this showcase. It looks fantastic. Yeah, I'd seen this one shown off once before. Um, I can't remember if it was like at a state of play or where right. it was but the, it has been shown before but like yes i absolutely want to try the demo like it looks like it looks like the free runner type game we didn't know we needed yeah. um good pixel it, art too yeah great pixel art kind of reminds me of like a cross of like celeste and super meat boy like kind of like super meat boy meets celeste in like a style mm -hmm. like celeste style um yeah can't yeah. wait to try this one out I, I definitely need to download a lot of these uh, demos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you, you have got more it, to say? It, oh, I was going to say, do you have any any others that were of interest? I got a, I got a few more that I thought were standouts, yeah. but I wasn't sure how many you had that you wanted to talk about. I have one more game yeah, that yeah. I'd like to talk about. And that, or no, actually two more games. Um, yeah. The first one, Unicorn Overlord. Um, this one appears in my video for... Hotly anticipated games coming out next month. Um, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is one of my favorite games ever. Um, Vanillaware is just, is one of those companies that like anytime they put something out, it's going to be special. Um, it's, they're always special in a different department, like whether it be mm -hmm. story, whether it be gameplay, whether it be one of the coolest um, side scrolling beat em ups that, you know, right. have ever been made. Um, they are just, so good at what they do and this game looks like it is just hitting all those marks um it looks great vanillaware is definitely like up there for me um with super giant like super mm -hmm. giant the hades developer like always comes out with like new interesting new ideas totally and vanillaware does the same thing like i don't think they've really covered the same genre more than once so totally Cannot yeah, wait to totally. play this one. Bummed that the demo is only for Switch. Very strange decision by uh, Vanillaware and Atlas. Mm -hmm. um, I will have to wait until I have my Switch to give the demo a try. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting choice. That, that was going to be my next game. Um, I'm going to echo all your sentiments. Great company. The game looks fantastic. Like you said, it looks like it covers all those bases that makes Vanillaware games look and feel special so i'm gonna um skip over to um what game did i want to talk about next i had a couple more um i guess i'll go for the more obvious one uh should make my tensei 5 vengeance um this one looks great uh what this game is essentially is it's like persona 5 royal edition it's uh uh 
kind of a remastered version of the game, fixes some of the things that people made maybe didn't like, adds a lot more um, monsters and demons to collect. I think new characters ext- extends the storyline and adds a new uh, a new little tale to it, kind of like how uh, Royal did. Um, mm-hmm. Really cool. I just think it, it, you know Atlas, like I said earlier, Sega Atlas, they're crushing this year. There were complaints um, on the initial release of this game, and I'm assuming that this version is going to be kind of um, reacting to that and and fi- making some of those fixes that people complained about i know some people felt like there was missing pieces of the story it wasn't fully complete and i think this game aims to remedy all of that so i think that's really cool and exciting stuff for shimigami tensei fans yeah no this one looks awesome um i've never really vibed with smt as much as i vibed with persona um like i'm a huge persona fan uh, just something about like having to have the monsters in your party as like actual, actually there rather than like right. as your like persona, um, and then like the the lack of like social um, portions in the games sure. has never really gotten me too into them. Like I've tried so hard to get into Nocturne, but this one has me excited. It actually yeah. looks really cool. I think I probably will pick this one up in June if. You know the summer's as slow as it looks like it might be this year, right? Which is totally fine because we have so many games, so much to early. play. So the, yeah, the backlog is growing by the hour. It feels like at this point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to be it honest is. with you, uh, the um, floodgates have opened. I have one more game to talk go about. Go for it. Another crab's treasure is mm. the last game I want to talk about. So this is a Souls like crab style a like crab game where like you equip other crab uh, other like uh types of shells mainly garbage in a search for your own shell and it looks like a really fun take on like a top down souls like game so yeah i think this one looks really cool um if the demo comes out i definitely want to give it a try um uh, i know we we do get quite a few of these types of games here and there, but this one looks to be unique and like an interesting twist on the top-down Souls-like style game. Yeah, this was actually my last game as well. I'm really okay. excited for this one. I think it's weird. This game reminds me, it does, like not from like the visual aspect, because I do think like I think it looks it looks fine in the visuals, um, <laughs> but I was gonna say it reminds me of. Nintendo likes to take popular genres and then do their own spin on them. And this reminds me of what Nintendo, like a new IP that Nintendo would come up with. Oh, what if we did a Souls-like game, but you play as a crab and you collect, you know, your your (laughs) shell is your armor and you collect different shells. Kind of like their take on, you know, a third-person competitive shooter is squids with ink instead of guns. So, um... This reminds me of that without that like AAA Nintendo polish, but this I I'm all about games like these. I love to see this kind of uh, wacky creativity. So I think this one looks like a fun time. I'm definitely eager to try it out. Um, that yeah, that yeah. was gonna be my last one, but I do want to mention uh, one more really quick. Uh, just that I think it was a cool little surprise for for people. Um, they're bringing the 3DS game Monster Hunter Stories to Switch, which is pretty cool because Switch has Monster Hunter Stories too. People love that game. I I've, I've only played the demo. I will say the battle battle system in it is phenomenal. Um, so if the first one's anything like that, I it's probably going to be a pr- pretty good one for people, especially if you're a Monster Hunter fan or you enjoy yeah. the second one. That's pretty. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, one more thing before we move yeah, on. Yeah. What type what what type of game is South Park Snow Day? Like I've seen this game like three times and I still don't know if it's like a Diablo style game, an X-Men Legends style game, like you know, yeah, like I'm not I, sure. I assumed yeah. it was like some sort of a team based like PvP, but the didn't really look like that <laughs> on the trailer. No, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Um don't wanna don't want to skip over this one. I know this is yeah. Chip Davis's favorite 
uh, he's he said that he is interested in this game. So yeah, Chip yeah. Davis loves uh, both snow days and South Park. So so I hear. Yeah. So shout out to him. Figured yeah. I'd mention it, but maybe he can tell us what type of game it is in the comments right. because I still don't know. They they this they have been these trailers have been really bad for it. They need a. <laughs> <laughs> they need um ubisoft publishing still right to maybe give them better ad advertising like they do with stick of truth and fractured butthole right um, yeah yeah Anyways. But I, I mean <laughs> all in all in all this was a solid partner showcase i feel like it was really snappy they didn't stick around too long on any one thing there was no awkward pauses or awkward moments they kind of just flew through all these announcements relatively quickly. They did, I will say, um, it, not a negative, but kind of a jacked up move. Nintendo completely trolled people in this partner showcase. Um, they open up, it's all mysterious. Not the opening of the, the showcase, it was like halfway through or towards the end. It's all mysterious, and then you see the Rare logo pop in. And I know half the world thought we were either getting like Banjo Tooie, Diddy Kong Racing, maybe some, maybe a physical version of Rare Replay, and that was going to be part of that Xbox, you know, work putting their games on other hardware. And then it's you know, we, cool thing that we're getting Killer Instinct on on NSO, but you know, a bunch of games that not many people are going to be like, yeah, for. Wait. You mean you didn't go off for snake rattle and roll? <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, no, no. Not a big blast corpse fan either, huh? No, that that's what popped in. I think. I think it shows the rare replay or the the rare logo, and everyone was like, you know, everyone's losing their mind. Oh, snap! Rare replay or banjo two or Diddy Kong Racing, and then it was blast corpse. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I that don't was, see why dude, anyone. That was would... a troll. They could have just opened up with blast corpse. Like, they didn't have to do yeah. the mysterious logo turning over. I mean, I I mean, I guess maybe that's just you, because, like, I feel like Blast Corps is such a huge title. So, yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, that, that definitely was a troll by Nintendo right there. Uh, it reminds me of the, um, the DoorDash delivery Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, <laughs> um announcement from jeff Keeley at the summer games Fest uh, last year brutal yeah brutal yeah. <laughs> that's terrible uh, didn't so sony did something like that too where they were like oh but we've got one more thing and then it was like a controller didn't uh, they do that right. like, it was like the god of war controller but before you like, go we have one more thing to show you and everyone's was, like oh there's something bigger than this stuff is the God of War PS5, but they did end up showing the God of War trailer right after that. But like, that's right. I was like, they gotta be kidding me. And then, <laughs> then they start playing it. I was like, okay, God of War Ragnarok, hell yeah, let's do this. Right, right, right. But, but yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh man, I I love like as much as I hate those moments in the moment, um, they're they're pretty pretty damn funny uh, <laughs> upon reflection. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's dive in to our next topic. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Both, I think I could speak for both of us when I say it's one of, if not our most anticipated game of the year so far. Or at least one of. Um, this yeah. game, reviews just dropped. The game launches next week. Reviews just dropped. It is sitting on Open Critic at a 93 right now. And as far as uh, the amount of reviews that have come in, the number of reviews uh, uh, in conjunction with the score, it is officially the second highest rated Final Fantasy game of all time, only falling under by one point, Final Fantasy IX. People are loving it. But... You know, not all things are sunshine and rainbows. Some people do have some gripes, Colin. Uh, did you look into many of the reviews or see what uh, kind of what people are saying about this one? Yeah, so it, 89 critics have reviewed it, and it's mostly getting 8s and 9s, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Really good. Um, really good. And like you said, 93% on Open Critic, 100% uh, of critics recommend 
Uh, some of the things I'm hearing is that um, the story um, has some buildup moments and they don't pay off. That doesn't deliver right. on that buildup. And then the other thing I'm hearing is that the um, open world feels like Ubisoft. And let me just say, I'm a Ubisoft apologist, and I absolutely love the Assassin's Creed game, so I love me a good old checklist. So I'm I'm here for I'm here for that. So right, right, right. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. pretty much the same things that I was kind of uh, seeing float around. Story was an issue for a lot of people. Um, apparently, there's some really big highs, but there's also some lull moments. Some of the story beats don't have the payoffs that maybe you were hoping for or necessarily expecting. And then at times, some of it's a little bit convoluted to where it's like, what? wait, what's going on? This isn't really adding up, um, which is a bummer. And maybe in some aspects, you know, it's this is the middle child of what's essentially a trilogy. So maybe some of that being the middle game has an effect on you know, some of those other, other elements. And l like, like you said, I have read and uh, seen some stuff, people complaining about the open world, um, that it's a little bit, you know, uninspired, like you said, very checklisty Ubisoft formula, go here, do ABC, go to this checkpoint or point of interest, do ABC, rinse, repeat. Um, I mean, that concerns me a little bit. I, I don't think it's the end of the world. I know you really enjoy that. My issue with with some of that checklist style open world is sometimes I get into a mindset where I can't move on to the next thing until I'm done with the one thing. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of the one thing. And then there's a lot of the next thing. And then I get burnout. And then I'm like, eh, I'm a little bit bored of this today. Maybe I'm going to play something else. And then I end up maybe not going back for a month or two months. So that's kind of my issue with the check with the checklisty. But it's not it's not a formula that that I hate. And sometimes it's just a matter of me just being like, no, you know, what? I'm going to focus on story right now, and, and yeah. not not do all this. I don't have to go to every cave on the map. And a hundred percent it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, you know me. I'm I'm the one hundred percenter. I'm ninety two hours, ninety three hours into like a Dragon Infinite Wealth right now. I have to sit see everything that the game has to offer on the map. I'm gonna do the same thing for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I cannot wait to plot my route through this map. Um, you mentioned that it is the middle child, and I just want to remind viewers that. Uh, Two Towers is the middle child of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's the and worst of the I best. Know, yeah, and I know people were very upset at the, um, you know, spoiler alert for those of you who have, haven't watched the series or the trilogy. Um, Sam Frodo don't get anywhere in that one. But you know what? Return of the King paid off in space. So I think, um, you know, anyone complaining about the story not paying off, you know? Like you said, I think uh, I think whatever the third game resolution or whatever people are calling it right now, uh, I think we're gonna get res resolution to all those things. A middle game, a middle game does not need to have the payoff. Let me tell you, the middle item, yeah. middle item shouldn't have the payoff. You should end with tension. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it it it's literally the second act of a three act story. It's setting up the you know the finale exactly so, i mean but again you know we other than the demos we haven't played the full version so who knows That's maybe right. there there could be very valid things about the story it's like i don't really like where they went with this um but we speaking of demos we we both played both demos that were available the first one was very story heavy more linear um that uh, focused on flashbacks, delving into, you know, some of the story about Cloud's relationship with Sephiroth. The second demo gave a little slice of the open world and allowing you to experiment with your party. Right off the bat, I don't think it goes with any surprise to anyone 
um, stepping into the second demo. The game's gorgeous. It's beautiful. That world oh, is stunning. Number two, another no-brainer, no surprise. Music, fantastic. I cannot wait. It's one of coming off of Final Fantasy VII Remake just, you know, a, a couple, two, three weeks ago. Um, I could not stop having rolled the credits. I couldn't stop listening to the music on my computer while, while working and stuff. The soundtrack is so good. Knowing that this one has over 400 songs in it. I cannot wait for that. Um, characters. They're fantastic. They're the same characters from, from seven. There's going to be new characters, um, introduced in this one that weren't in seven remake, but my overall impressions was, I mean, I didn't play it as long as, as as you did. I went into this. I did a couple of the the map uh, mm -hmm. icons that were like battle challenges. You could do you could run into enemies and do battle challenges. They had like three categories. One might be finish them within the time limit. One of them might be beat them before they do a specific thing before they take flight or something like that, um, which are pretty cool. Um, they give you like bonus rewards depending on how many of the the ch the checks that you knock out. Those seem pretty pretty darn fun. Um, other than that, I just kind of wandered around a little bit. You get l like little consumables you can pick up, and that kind of reminded me of Xenoblade a little bit. Xenoblade Chronicles, how there's like crafting mats all over the floor and stuff that yep. you can just run by and and grab. Um, but I did a few of those, walked around a little bit, and then I. I uh, uh, went to there's a there's a town and it kind of you do a boss fight and it ends there. But Colin, before I say any more, I, I want to hear your initial thoughts as well. Before yeah, I so ramble. I, I, I ran around uh, like hitting icon like the icons and stuff, and you know, I Chad Lee's new assistant Maya, I believe. <laughs> yeah, comes up and gives you like, um, like challenges, like you said, mm -hmm. and I fought the big bird thing. Mm. A Zoa or whatever. Um, I gave Red Thirteen a try. Gave Tifa a try. Gave Cloud a try. Um, I really enjoyed it. My uh, my one thing is like, I do not find fighting the flying enemies very fun. Like I did like fighting enemies on the ground. I did really love that. I, it's just it feels weird fighting the flying enemies because you're just like attacking kind of air on the ground. And yeah. Doing the the yeah. moment there's flying enemies, I'll switch to like Barret or Aerith and use magic. I'll I'll use a ranged character because yeah. I'm the same way. Um, they're they dash around, they like swoop and dash fast, and I kind of get d disoriented. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, I I completely agree. Um, yeah, I I think, yeah, maybe I'll have to have one of those characters in my party to switch to when. Right. When you have to fight the flying enemies, I, you know, I mean, I, I said it before on a previous podcast, like they, they have the Kingdom Hearts series, like that combat is some of the best, you know, um, right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, you know, uh, brutalize the combat right now. Like, I, I think the combat is a lot of fun in this one, um, mm -hmm. but it is like the one weak point that I. Sorry. No worries. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, I you know, I won't belabor that point. Um the other the other thing that I, I know I'm I'm listing off a lot of things I don't like. Um I, I was surprised there wasn't a dedicated jump button on the chocobo. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. I was gonna say something. Uh okay. I thought you were gonna say what my most jarring thing was. My um, most jarring thing in this game was that you can't jump when you're in... Oh, yeah. Um, I am not used to playing... It wasn't jarring in Final Fantasy VII Remake because it was a linear game, but playing a big, sprawling, open-world title and not having a jump is jarring to me. I kept thinking I could do it in the when I first started. I was like, oh, yeah, there's no jump. I was like, wait, what's the jump on? Oh, yeah, there is no jump. It's weird. And granted, I you know, Zelda's my favorite series of all time. But mm -hmm. as soon as Zelda went open world, they added jump. And I know jump's here to stay. So it's been a long... It's been since Skyward Sword that you couldn't, couldn't jump. It's been a long time. Three generations. Uh, yeah. So, so it's, it's, that was weird. That was jarring for me. It's very jarring for me. I mean... 
I am a big Assassin's Creed player and like there's not like really you can jump off of things. It it you know, it's kind of like the the, the Zeldas of yore where yeah. you know, you can like go up to a ledge and jump, but like there's no button that you can press to jump. But right. it, it seems more normal in that world like you're you're running around on flying chickens um essentially and <laughs> it's very weird to me there's not like a dedicated jump button at least on the chocobos i right. can understand like cloud with his bulky buster sword not being able to jump sure when you're running around as him but like yeah the not being able to jump on the chocobos was weird and then i don't know if you got to the parts where like you can dig for items with the chocobos um no i know it, okay. they did the little tutorial pop-up for it but i only okay. spent a brief time i kind of just did okay. a couple things and then beeline to like the little story beat yeah so I, it was interesting and i know i've been like i'm just pointing out some things i i think the demo was great like i mean i overall think this is an amazing game but I just want to point out something uh, that I felt I like. do not yeah. like your negativity on this fair show. Fair enough. I'm fair enough. Kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Spit it out. Speak your truths, man. Who cares? So there's a, okay. So there's a part where an icon pops up and like you can like dig with your chocobo and like I must have spent like 10 minutes running around trying to find the spot to dig in. And I don't know if like the icon's supposed to like get even bigger or something or is it like supposed to mm. flash when you're on it but like i was just literally slamming the chocobo's head against like every little area and i just couldn't find the treasure i just gave up i'm hoping right. that maybe the maybe you know it's more explained in the the real game um so i thought that was a little weird mm -hmm. uh, i won't lie and then um there was one other thing that was really weird like I love the crafting, the potions. I love that you can craft them with the crafting materials. Like, that right. was really nice. Um, I noticed there's no tents in the game. Um, I'd really like a tent. Um, because, like, the tent item is a staple in the Final Fantasy series. And I think it'd be nice to be able to use a tent to just quickly heal up all your HP and your MP. Especially after right. those, like, those, like, side challenge fights. Like, that, that bird really, you know... Gave me a run for my money. I wasted all of Cloud's MP and right. I don't know. There's just do something you, about. Do you think it's possible that tents just weren't available in the demo, or do you think that we're just not getting tents? I'm hoping. I'm hoping uh, the former. Yeah. And not the latter, because I really like tents. I think they're a cool item. I don't feel. I don't feel as much qualms wasting sure. them, using them as I do when like I use like four potions to heal my characters right. up the full just doesn't feel great to me the hoarder in me is like yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't like that mm -hmm. didn't like using that ether either like so yeah i hope there is like a a heal all item that it's that's pretty available in the game to make it to make me feel like i can go all out in a battle and not have to like be like oh now i can't really go do that other battle um right. so yeah but we'll see i mean the reviews are phenomenal. I'm sure yeah. it addresses that issue, those issues that I have. I'm sure I'll get used to not jumping on the map. Yeah, um, I'll get used yeah. to that too, which <laughs> is something that I noticed was jar. It's and it, again, I say it's funny because like I didn't think about it at all in FF7 remake or Integrate <laughs> because <laughs> they're very linear experiences. But being in the big sprawling world, I was like, oh wait, I can't jump. This is weird. And it was just like yeah. was weird on my brain. So something that I thought that I actually really loved about this, um, they didn't do this in Seven Remake. Either that, or I just didn't have the settings on for it. You correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and this is this is a small thing, but I love it. Maya, the little assistant who talks to you about the challenges, she communicates to you through your controller. This is a feature yeah. that that I first remember experiencing on the Wii with Twilight Princess and Minna communicating to you. I love this in games. I think it really adds to the immersion, especially Maya has like a nice little vocal effect that sounds like she's coming through some sort of communicator. Um, really cool stuff. And I wish we got more of this in games, especially when you're getting calls and stuff like that, because <laughs> Again, it adds to the immersion. I find this a lot more enjoyable than, let's say, adaptive triggers, which is neat on paper, 
But honestly, I turned mine off because I it bugs me. It makes me feel like something's wrong or I'm going to break my controller. This, on the other hand, we barely see stuff like this in games. And I love that they add. It's a small detail. But again, like I said, it really builds that immersion. And I don't know. It, 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 it adds to the experience. Yeah, and it absolutely cuts through the chatter in games. Like, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, this is important. I need to listen to this, you know? Like, yep. um, yeah, so I completely agree with you. I think that's a great feature. I love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then um, uh, some a couple other things from the reviews that I wanted to mention. Uh, one thing that's really exciting, and I know this, there's a little bit of contention between this, but uh, a lot of praise from the mini games negativity as far as them kind of derailing the the flow of the game and the pacing but from what i've been reading is that the mini games are phenomenally done and um uh i think uh i listened to what was it i listened to i think i listened to a little bit of kind of funny maybe it was talk about their opinions of the game and i think it was kind of funny Anyways, whoever I listened to, someone said that they thought that the card game in this one was better than Gwent. And let me tell you, if there's even any semblance of truth to that, I'm going to be addicted to the card game because I was obsessed with Gwent. When I was playing Witcher 3, I was like, anytime there was a chance for me to battle someone in Gwent, I was doing it. And so much so that when Gwent came, the game Gwent came out, downloaded that, played hours and hours and hours purchased uh throne breaker i think it's called the the mm. other game based on gwent love gwent so if this is indeed better than that or at least at that level of a card mini game i will be hooked i already know it that was blessing that said that it was better okay. than gwent and um yeah round of gwent <laughs> um yeah i was obsessed <laughs> with gwent when witcher 3 came out um yeah it, i mean it has me excited um yeah, I, I think that the mini games as a whole, like, I think that's what makes Final Fantasy VII so great is like, yes, there's like crazy stuff happening in the world. Like the world is like on the verge right. of being destroyed by Sephiroth. Um, and you're hanging out playing games at the Gold Saucer. It doesn't make yeah. sense. It never makes sense. Like mini games always cut into the immersion. But I think that's what makes jrpgs so much fun and like yeah it's just so wacky like we talk about i mean this is the yakuza cast we do talk yeah. about yakuza a lot and that is one of the things that happens it's just like you mm -hmm. know the, it's like it's like there's a gang out there there's a yakuza gang out there trying to kill you but you should probably help this host club stay in business yep. like it doesn't make sense but it's awesome it's right. fun yeah so i cannot wait for the mini games to break into like the seriousness of the story. So yeah. I'm, I'm here for it. So no, I, yeah. I, I love that stuff too. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, th those are my thoughts on final fantasy 13. I, I are sorry, 13. Sheesh, not a final fantasy that I get excited about. Wow. <laughs> uh, final fantasy seven rebirth. Bird. Um, yes. Again, it, one of my most anticipated games of the year. So thrilled that it's doing so well. And I want to add, I did I did draft this game for Fantasy Critic. You so did. I'm getting some meaty little little bit of pointage right there. Yeah, I think you're looking at about like 27 points for that one. Yeah, yeah. feels feels nice. Feels nice. Game Birds deserves a win every every once in a while. <laughs> But yeah. with that out of the way, we're going to move on to the next topic. Shadow of the Erd Tree. Elden Ring is back, baby. And man, it's looking good. This and looks you good. Heard, yeah, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, yeah. This trailer looks incredible. <laughs> it looks uh, so good. Yeah, um, I think it's Mikola that's like the main focus of this trailer. I'm right. super excited to, like, you know, he's, uh, you know, Elden Ring fans have like theorized on like what's what's going on with this egg after you kill this big blood dude. I forget his right. name because the lore in this game is so ridiculous. It's wild uh, it is very wild. Um, like, yeah. So, um, 
I'm stoked. Miyazaki confirmed that they that the DLC you will be transported to a new area that's roughly, I think he said it's like um, a third the size of the Lindgrave map, which is a large, large. It's portion. basically it's a big DLC. <laughs> it's a, yes, it's a big DLC. Um, I could. Yeah, you can expect like thirty hours probably from this thing. So yeah, yeah, Super excited. No, this looks so cool. Uh, like you said, the story could be a little bit tough to follow. If you guys enjoy Souls games, if you like Elden Ring, check out Vati Vidya. He does like all the Souls lore. His videos are phenomenal. It's super helpful if you get really invested in those games. It really. I don't know when it, when I first beat Dark Souls three and I found Va Vati Vidya's channel and started learning mm -hmm. the lore. My appreciation for that game like skyrocketed. So if you guys are interested in that stuff, definitely check it out because he's phenomenal with with the Vati, lore. Vati Vidya is good. Uh, Miss Chalice is also really great. Mm. Um, another great Elden Ring like lore um, person. She does a lot of lore videos. She's great. Awesome. Um, yeah, definitely recommend that. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I I didn't even want to dive into this lore but, like too much because like Bloodborne and Dark Souls were so intricate and like their worlds are like a quarter of the size. <laughs> right. Um, um. Yeah. I mean, I I love I love where this DLC is going. Sure. Um, it looks unhinged. Like all of this other stuff, that, so. dude. That that lion. There's like that lion character who's like, <laughs> like smiling, all like disturbed. I'm like, oh my god. No, it looks really good. Um, what's that character's name? The the what looks to be the main villain in the game. What's his name again? Not sure if he's the main. Mikola. 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 He's he's the brother. He's a little brother to um. M M Melania, Mel M right? Melania, Millennia. yeah. yeah. The, the hardest, the current hardest boss in right. Um, Elden Ring. Um, yeah, he looks, he looks <laughs> rad in this game, and I love the the voice acting for his character. It's got that mystique. He has like a little bit of an elegance, like this, like uh, uh, royal elegance to his voice. He just s seems like he's going to be a really cool character in the game. Um. But I'm hoping to see. I, I'm curious what they're gonna do as far as we know. We have an idea of like what what's going on with the story. You know, some of the characters that are gonna be involved. We have an idea now of the size of the map. Do you think there's gonna be some cool additions? Maybe a new class, or maybe expanding on the curtain classes. Maybe some new um, spells and stuff like that. Do you think we're gonna get a lot of that sort of stuff, or? Are you hoping for like, a lot of that stuff? It looked like there was some sort of martial arts style, um, like item with a like a like an L one ability. I, I played right. on PlayStation, obviously the L one, or like you know the the unique ability looked like a like a martial arts like quick kick that right. looked really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, w what about you? Like the. the I don't know if you saw anything or what you're hoping for, for like additional things. Just great bosses. Um, to be fair, I, I, I think, or not, I think Elden Ring is one of my favorite games of all time, period. I, I think, I think it's one of the most important games of the generation, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's come out in the last 10 years. I think it's one of the most important games. Um, I'm really, really, really excited to be back in this world. And I guess if I could have anything with this, I'd say maybe despite all the praise that I'll always give Elden Ring, I do have some gripes with it. They did reuse a lot of bosses and stuff. Obviously, they filled out the maps with like caves and little dungeons and tombs and stuff like that. And I feel like the big story bosses were really good. But they fell short to what we had gotten before in the Souls and Bloodborne. So yeah. I hope instead of like trying to pump this game with like a hundred, you know, mini bosses in it, 
they go really big with the with the story bosses and they feel like oh wow they went all out with the with the main ones you know what i mean not that i don't yeah. want good mini bosses i do but we don't need 200 of them maybe do 50 of them and then do like nine or eight or seven whatever phenomenal main story bosses that are like big like the super epic and challenging you know what i mean yeah no i mean we definitely don't we don't want uh elden ring well we don't we we don't yeah we don't want like the same bosses re reused over and over right. we don't want the dragon quest effect where like you're fighting green slimes and then like 10 hours later you're fighting red slimes um right you know that's like not fun um yeah, uh, Miyazaki did state that he wanted to make the dungeon seem more seamless. Sure. Uh, you know, seamless and natural into the world. Whether that means, like, maybe, like, you're in a dungeon and you don't even realize it at certain points. Like, it's not like you go down an elevator um, so, into the cave. Like, kind of like Tears of the Kingdom a little bit, where, you know, it's yeah. just, like, out in the world. There's no, like... You know, you could just drop into one, just walk into one and be like, oh, crap. It's yeah. Like, like, I mean, technically you could. There are story beats that will, you know, lead you to, to the temples in that game. But, you right. know, theoretically you could skydive right into the dungeon, into one yeah. of the dungeons. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be, yeah, I think that would be really cool. And I know we didn't say we were going to get nuts this uh, episode, but I have a nuts prediction that, you know. Like, if it came true, it would be, like, the wildest thing ever. Let's get okay. nuts. Love that. Okay. So, at the end, at the end of this DLC, when you beat the final boss, you find out that Elden Ring was another painted world, and then we get a trailer drop for Dark Souls 4. Ah! Oh, my God. Dude, I'd cry. I'd fall to my knees and cry and pray and bow. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I, I love, I absolutely love the idea of Bloodborne and Elden Ring being pen painted worlds in all uh, links. They're all, everything's all linked together. Um, no, I would, I would die. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know that we'd ever get another Dark Souls. I really hope so. It might be an Elden Ring 2 that's the next thing. But man, that would be nuts. That's that's yeah. as that's as nuts as it gets. Yeah, so that's I mean that's that's my prediction, you know, sticking to it. It's gonna happen. Damn. But uh it's probably not gonna happen, but I really want it to. Right. <laughs> um but I'd yeah, say it, I'd say it's as likely as Bloodborne 2. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, that's coming any day now. Any so, day now. Yeah, come on, Blue Point. Or at this point, as likely as a Bloodborne remaster. Oh gosh, or a but, PC port. Right, but we've got thirty Last of Us remasters. That's true. So, that's very true. At least we have Thank that. Thanks, PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, those are my yeah. thoughts. Do you have anything else that you wanted to say about it, other than you're really excited? Uh, some of these monsters have me really scared. Um, yeah, I did. I did As get the always. platinum in this game. Um, I will say that I got the platinum during the time when the mimic tier was pretty broken, but I still got that platinum. Um, uh, so yeah, some of these, some of the monsters and the bosses they've show have me really, you know, scared. But I'm ready for it. Like I can't wait to dive back into this one. Um, yeah, uh, it's gonna be like um, riding a tricycle. I know a tricycle, a unicycle, because it is going to be really hard to relearn how to use it, to play this game and use my character that I'm going to take over to that yeah. game. Yeah. yeah, totally. That's always the fear because it takes so much discipline to like really get good at these games that like you step away even for a month and you're like, oh, dude, I suck. Uh, yeah. So yeah, now I feel you there. I, I've got I've got a big hope, and this is nowhere near as nuts as what you just said. But I'll just throw it as a let's get nuts, and that is we know Switch Two is coming. Give us a Elden Ring Director's Edition, Deluxe Edition, what Finale Edition, where it has Elden Ring and Shadow of the Erd Tree. It's the complete edition. It's got everything. It's on the Switch 2, a more powerful and capable console. 
and we get to play Elden Ring at home or on the go, I would definitely pick up a second copy for that. So come on, guys. What do you got to lose? Yeah, I mean, I wonder how that runs on the Steam Deck right now. Um, sure. Probably decently. I mean, it's probably a battery drainer, but yeah. Yeah. I, I would love to see that on a Nintendo console. Um, yeah. Yeah, throw in like cool. a Mario Mario armor skin, you know, where we get like Cappy. I want to run around <laughs> the herd tree with Cappy on my head. Yeah, or like, you know, a fireball spell. Yeah. Like a Mario fireball Fire spell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for it. Uh, yeah. But all right, guys, that is today's show. I hope you enjoyed the discussion as much as I did. Um, again, like I said, be sure to check out Colin. His channel will be linked in the description box below. Any games necessary. He's got a new video out today. Check out me if you guys are first timers. Hit that subscription button. Check out my newest video. Uh, Colin, anything you want to say before we leave? Um, yeah, if you if you enjoyed this discussion, like the video. If you didn't, make sure to downvote it and subscribe to see what dumb shit we say next. Amen. We'll see you all on the next Game Bird Weekly. Peace.